Hello and welcome back to Six Sigma TV.net. In this module, I'll be going over the measure phase. So you can see by this slide, there's several tools involved in the measure phase, but primarily what we're doing is taking and looking at what are some of the critical to customer, or voice of the customer that we receive, and what are the X's or the Y's that are going to help us understand how well those those how well that process is performing relative to our customer's requirements by going out and gathering data. As Je Jeff mentioned in the define phase, it's critical once we start determining what our customers want that those wants are measured in some kind of measurable term. And that way we can go in and look at our process and take those measurements and turn those what is critical to our customer into metrics or variables within a process that we can actually measure to help us predict how well the outputs are going to be. So some of the skills in the measure phase include putting together a data collection plan as far as what are the X's that impact the Y. We're going to go out and perform a sampling strategy if we cannot you know, sample the entire population, which in most cases is not possible. We're going to prioritize some of the measurements that we're going to go look for in terms of which ones have the biggest impact on our X's. And then we're going to go in and understand those measurements and determine the, the integrity or the quality of those measurements by performing some type of a measurement system analysis where we look at the measurement system and make sure that the variation within our process is not due to the measurement system but is in fact caused by variation in the process itself, not the actual measurements being taken. So first thing we'll do is create a measurement plan to measure current process performance in relation to each of the CTCs. We're going to analyze the methods of measurement to ensure data collected are accurate and reliable. Are we all collecting the same measurement or do we all have the same definitions, etc.? Then we're going to go collect the measurement data. The measurement phase results in a clearly defined and tested plan to collect data that accurately reflects, represents the process. One of the key, one of the big quotes that I like here is one by Edwards Deming in which he says 85%, which he later, he later upward adjusted closer to 95%, the reasons for failure to meet customers' expectations are related to deficiencies in systems and processes rather than the employees. The role of management is to change the process rather than badgering individuals to do better, which is normally what the case is. People stuck in, you could have the greatest person there is stuck in a broken process and the process will win everything, every time. One of the reasons why I really like that quote is it's important when we go out and start measuring the process is that people get very defensive when their work is being measured. What we want to do is make sure that we, they understand we're measuring the process, not the person. We want to fix the process, not do any finger pointing at individuals that are stuck in an ineffective process. So hopefully they, we can make them understand that our goal is to make the process better, not to evaluate their performance. <coughs> so data collection plan template. Once again, on our downloads at our site, you can download our project, our project templates, and it has within that, temp, that Excel spreadsheet, there's a data collection pr plan template. And what it helps us do, this one example we have here is identify measurements, define operational definitions, planning to collect the data, and then how we're going to measure, what's our measurement system analysis to make sure that this is performing properly. So here's an example of the template. On the left you see the CTC, or as Jeff was mentioning in, in the define phase, what's the voice of the customer? CTC stands for critical to customers. So we understand what the voice of the customer is, and we prioritize those requirements into what's critical. Next, we'll understand what are the metrics that help us predict that CTC, what are the operational de definitions of those metrics, where's the source and the location for those, that metric and the data we're going to collect, how often are we going to do it, when, volume, et cetera, other factors, are we going to stratify that data, do we want to break it out, and then what, was, what were the results of the MSA. So data, what is data? Data, if you can't measure it, you really don't understand what it, what it's, what it is that we're looking at. So, Data helps us distinguish what we think is from happening from what really is happening. Helps us confirm or disprove proceed ideas and theories and eliminate non-objective decision making. Data is reliable information upon which we can make decisions. So basically, we're not making our decisions based on valuable data, we're just making decisions based on gut feel. And data made on, or decision made on valuable data, which is realistic data, always turn out to be proven out to be better decisions. So two types of data that we deal with to make it simple. We have qualitative or quantitative data. Qualitative ha factors have discrete levels, i.e. number of errors, good, bad, pass, fail, etc., whereas quantitative factors are continuous, where we use some type of a measurement system. So cycle times, call center handling times, etc., etc., are, are considered to be 
d continuous data. So here's some other examples of discrete data, things that can be counted or categorized, answers the questions, which one, what kind, of, et cetera. So example, number of errors per application. Seven out of 22 errors had applications. 400 rivets on the wing are defective. My new car has six door dings already. Those are all examples of discrete data. Continuous data are things that can be measured. The easiest way to, for me to understand continuous data is, can I take this thing that I'm trying to measure and cut it in half, and does that make sense? So if we had a defect, I can't cut it in half and say we only have half a defect. We either have a defect or we don't have a defect. Whereas if we have a minute, I can cut that in half and say, yes, it took a minute and a half, it took a half a minute, or it weighed a pound and a half, et cetera. Anything that basically you can cut in half or uses some type of measuring device to determine is something considered to be continuous data. So here's a quick little exercise to, to, to show you the difference between continuous and discrete data. First one, production of tomatoes by weight. Okay, if you remember back to my definition, continuous weight uses a measurement scale. So production of tomatoes by weight, we would be collecting continuous data. Number of branches opened in New York in 2002. Branches either opened or not. So what is that? Discrete, right? So the time it takes for a battery to die, car battery to die, that's time. Time is measured what? Using a watch or some kind of a measurement scale. So it could be an hour, hour and a half, two hours. You can break it up into increments. So that would be continuous. The height of Mount Rainier, this one usually gets pushed back from everybody in, in, in our classes. Height. Height is a measurement, right? You measure in feet, in altitude, etc. So the height of Mount Rainier is continuous, whereas it is it does move. Otherwise, if it was just it's still a continuous measure. Number of calls received each day by a department, that would be discrete because we either received that call or we didn't. And then 37.8% of our patient's base is between 66 and 70 years old. So most people would say, well, that's continuous because we've got 0.8%. But we're looking at patients, are they between 66 and 70 years old or they're not between? They can, cannot be between and not between and still. So this is a discrete measurement. They're either between that bucket or they're not. So next we want to go on and identify the process measures. What are, what are the measures that are going to help us understand customers ex or see if we're meeting customers expectations and which inputs or process steps are impacting performance. We want to make sure we collect the data that truly reflects the performance of the process. So we go back to this slide on the process equation. Remember, Y's are the outputs. There's many X's that feed that Y but there's only a few X's that are what we call critical X's or that have a lot of leverage on determining the impact of that X or Y. So that's why we want to go in and look at all those X's and help determine which ones are the ones that will result in the greatest change if we improve or monitor those X's. Here's an example of a CTC tree. So we determine what's critical to our customer on the left that came from our voice of a customer in the define phase and we'll break that down into different components. So we need, in this case we need to print at least 100 pages in less than two minutes. One element is the length of the print documents, the printer speed, and the number of users. The measurements to help us predict that customer requirement could be even drilled down further into subcomponents, which could be file size in terms of length of print documents, file size, number of pages, order capacity, et cetera. So we want to get as much granularity and stratification of these measurements as we possibly can. How many do we use? Well, one thing we need to do is make sure when we understand voice of the customer and prioritize our critical to the customer measurements, we want to understand that all the ones that are critical are the ones that are being measured. Does the number of possible measures make it impractical to collect all the data? That's why we want to go through and prioritize these measures and make sure that we get the ones with the most leverage on our whys or have the biggest impact on our outputs. Does the cost in collecting the data outweigh the benefit? A lot of times we've seen people go out and achieve Six Sigma within their organization but the cost and the effort of achieving Six Sigma was greatly more significant than the actual cost or the savings that they that realized from the improvement efforts. But one thing's for sure, each CTC must have at least one measurement for us to help predict its output. So one of the things we want to do for each of these measurements are come up with what we call operational definitions. What those are, clear and concise descriptions of each of the measurements, including the process by which they're going to be collected, written in a language everybody can understand, and all measures must have operational definitions. So what is important is that they're different from regular is that operational definitions is to translate what you want to know into something that you can observe and measure. So you want to go out and make sure that we, we define what the measurements are and also understand that everybody knows how to 
take those measurements and are using the same, the same language to understand what those measurements are. So here's step for some of the steps for planning to collect data. Where's the data coming from? How much data and how often will be it collected? How will the data be used and displayed? What are the stratification factors for the data? Who will collect it? Do we need a data collection form? We need to train our collectors and then we need to test and validate our plan. That's a simple eight step approach to going out and ensuring you collect the right data and that the data is, is good and accurate and consistent and that is meaningful to us in terms of our process improvement. So then we go ahead and talk about planning the use and display of data. What kind of data is it? And what kind of tests are we going to perform? Then also how are we going to display it? What kind of graphical illustrations do we want to use to display how this data and how the process is performing? So this is a quick measure review checklist. We want to make sure that we have our data collection plan template filled out. We want to identify the measurements and any stratification, how we're going to collect it, and then our measurement system analysis. We want to go in and make sure that that data is good, that all the people are collecting the right data, and that the data is all repeatable and reproducible throughout the organization. So next, I'm going to turn this back over to Jeff Gray, and he's going to go into the analyze phase, and we'll 